first off, we want to say thank you to all those who participated in the She's My Sister conference. We pray that it has blessed you all greatly. On behalf of our pastor, Reverend Dr. Alan E. Waller, our First Lady, Dr. Ellen Jo Waller, and the entire Enon family, welcome to Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church, a place where people encounter God. If you do not have a church home, we pray that you would join us here at Enon after the invitation is extended following the preached word. If you do have a church home, we pray that through the word of God brought forth today, that you would be able to share the love of God with others. Remember, you are only a visitor once. After that, you become our friend, and we look forward to seeing you every now and then. And now, let's take a look at what's happening at the tab. Congratulations to all those who completed their new members classes. To God be the glory. We invite you to participate in the Baptism and Right Hand of Fellowship. Baptism and Right Hand of Fellowship will take place Tuesday, January 16, 2024. All new members who have completed their new members classes are invited to participate. For more information, email Deacon Stephen Ware at sware at enontab.org or Reverend Kevin H. Murphy, Associate Pastor of Illumination at kmurphy at enontab.org. Bible Zone is coming back and volunteers are needed. If you are 14 years of age or older, you, yes you, can volunteer. We will need your support every fourth Sunday from 9.30 a.m. to noon at E9 East. The grand reopening of Bible Zone is Sunday, January 28th. Registration required at enontab.org. Click the resources tab and online registration. Registration deadline is January 28th. For more information, email Reverend Brittany D. Mingo, Associate Pastor of Elevation Community at bmingo at enontab.org. Calling all brothers, join Pastor Waller and the men of Enon to attend this year's ninth annual King Summit. King is a movement that centers around helping brothers become all that they can be in Christ Jesus. King is a men's movement that centers around helping brothers to be all that they can be in Christ Jesus. Participants will be traveling by bus to Cleveland, Ohio to attend the 9th Annual King Summit on Wednesday, March 13th and returning Sunday, March 17th. Participants will attend the 9th Annual King Summit classes and seminars. Football Hall of Famer Mel Blount of the Pittsburgh Steelers will be hosting a tour of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. This experience will also include a fellowship dinner and Sunday morning worship service at Shiloh Baptist Church. The cost for this experience is only $650 per person, which includes lodging for four nights, tickets to the King Summit, and events. Register and make payments at enontab.org Click the Resources tab and click Online Registration. For more information, contact Rev. Jerome Glover Sr., the Associate Pastor of Preservation Community at jerglover at enontab.org or 215-276-7200, extension 2017, or Brother Chris Pender at capender at familiescommunity.org. Arcadia Scholarship, the 2023 Arcadia Enon Scholarship application is now available at Enon's website, enontab.org forward slash resources forward slash scholarship. These four year full time undergraduate tuition scholarships are available to two qualified 2024 graduating high school students. Apply now. The application deadline is Monday, February 5th. Enon family, this concludes the announcement portion for this week. Please consult Enon social media platforms for specific ministry announcements and continue to pray for our sick and shut in. Have a great week with God's favor. And now, please prepare your hearts for praise and worship. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, family. Praise the Lord, everybody. Did you come and give God praise this morning? Can you stand on your feet and lift your hands? 
to give God what's due him. We give all the glory to him this morning. We glorify and magnify our Savior. Hallelujah. We're walking in a new year. So we come with a new praise. Hallelujah. We want to say something new to our Savior. Hallelujah. Saying thank you for making it this far. Thank you for waking me up this morning and starting me on my way. I thank you for having breath in my body. I thank you for having the articulation of my speech. I bless him this morning. I bless him this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Has he done anything for you thus far? Has he done anything for you? Hallelujah. We bless him this morning. We bless him this morning. Hallelujah. We want him to sit in this place. Visit right now in the name of Jesus. We worship him. We worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're making a joyful noise unto him. We're making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Hallelujah. We're serving him with gladness. Hallelujah. We're serving him with gladness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Has he done anything for you? Hallelujah. Just to say, God, I thank you. I thank you for just having breath in my body. I thank you for breathing. Hallelujah. Can we stand for a word of prayer? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you this morning. Thank you, Father. We thank you. We magnify you and we bless you. God, we ask you to meet us here this morning, God. Have your way in this place like never before, God. Meet us, touch us, heal us, deliver us, set us free right now in the name of Jesus, God. For this is a new year that we will reset, God. So, God, we're looking for newness, God. We're looking for an encounter with you, God. We look up to grow and to just be with you more and more, to get to know you the better, God. So, God, we ask you to meet us, God. Even while we sit here, God, lift the heavy burden, God. Hallelujah, God, lift the heavy burden, God. Hallelujah. We magnify you. Come in this place and have your way. Reign free in here. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Now all glory and honor is due him. So we come to do it together. Hallelujah. We come to sing and praise and worship together. Do you agree?
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. With the fruit of your lips, can you open your mouth to compliment the God you serve to the one you love? Hallelujah. We glorify him. He is great and he is mighty. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, oh God, hallelujah. To you.
this morning. You wake up this morning, came to church. Now, how God be that exalted? To be that exalted by all his name. He's the way maker. He's a healer, a power keeper. All you have done for you this morning. Wake it up this morning. All we do is be glad in it. All we do is be glad in it, God. Because God is great this morning right now. The God is great right now. Yes. Keep on praising Him right now. Keep on praising Him, oh God. Be down in God. Hallelujah. Be down in God. Until you came this morning to know God is great, God is good all the time. I'm going to one more time, God is great this morning. So you woke up this morning, raising his up to Jesus' name, but he came to that cross to tell everybody he rose again for all your power. But oh God, he is worthy. God is worthy today. Amen. Amen. God is great today. God is great, and He's worthy to be praised. But the rise of the sun, the go down of the day, because He is worthy to be praised.
about the place of my now. It's all right. So our scripture reading could come from James 1, verse 2 through 8. And he reads, Can an old die, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds? For you know that the testing of your faith produces deep fatness. And let deep fatness have a full effect that you may be perfect and completely lacking in nothing. For any of you lacks wisdom, we do one more time. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives dignity to all with that reproach, and will be given him. But let him ask in faith. We do one more time. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for with the one who doubts in like a wave, a sea that's driven and tossed by the wind. For that person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double minded man, unstable in all his ways. <laughs> Let us pray. Father God, we came to the service to praise his name. We pray for our pastor to come for the word and bring all he has done for this morning, God. We love you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Come on, let's allow worshipers in to end. One of the great hymns of the church, Blessed Assurance. Blessed assure, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a glory! I'm an heir, purchase of God, born of His Spirit, washed in. Submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture. Now, angels bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers. Come on in a loud voice, say this is. Praising my Savior.
perfect submission. All is at rest. I and my Savior. Looking above, filled with His goodness, all this is, this is, praising my Savior. Sing that one more time and make it personal. I have a story. Come on, just say, I have, I have a story. I have, I'm praising my. say amen. You love the Lord? Say amen again. Glad to be here this morning. Say amen one more time. Amen. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I'm so excited this morning. While it is Young Adult Sunday, we are celebrating pastor's honor roll today and all of these young people in here that have at least uh, just A's and B's. I admit my, my honor roll is archaic. Uh, and it is, it, it, so understand what the honor roll is. That means if you're between ninth and 12th grade and you got a report card, the only thing on that report card is A's and B's. Uh, I know that some people in some place in the world can make some honor roll with a C on it, but not here. Uh, and so it is possible that you are on an honor roll somewhere, but pastor's on roll because he's old comes from the day when honor was with A's and B's and we're going to push you and believe God for it and we love everybody uh, but we celebrate every year uh, twice a year those honor roll and so in just a few moments we're going to get to that um, but we're grateful for those young people that are here this morning thank you to those of you that are going on and want to remind you that this Wednesday uh, those of you going with us to uh, Broadway to see Pearly Victorious. The reason for that, Leslie Odoms, who is a Philly native, we love him. Uh, Leslie Odoms is starring as Pearly Victorious. It is a play written by Ozzie Davis, 1961. Uh, it is a much needed story. Uh, uh, and it, and and we want to uh, take a crew up there. He asked that we would take a crew, and I'm so grateful. He gave me a happy number of 100 that would make him happy, that would be an impact. Thank you that 100 of you are going with us on this Wednesday. Uh, I appreciate you. Now, it's going to be a long day, but we got you. We're going to leave here at 11, and we'll probably be getting back at 11. But we got everything covered. Now, understand this. We are leaving at 11. Amen. It, it doesn't work to leave at 11.10. Um, we're leaving at 11. So you can't get here and leave here at 11. Amen. Bless his holy name. Even if, even if you have paid and you put the money down and you deserve a seat and all of that, at 11.03 you will see the brake lights <laughs> heading up the turnpike. And so we want to thank you for that because it's going to be an awesome day. There's a talk back with the cast. 
Uh, so after the show is over, everybody's going to get out and we're going to be able to sit down and talk with them. And the reason for the talk back, I think, was important because it's period comedy. Uh, it's 1961, and there's some stuff that may look to a person born today like minstrel stuff that at first experience, you might want to feel offended until you understand the genius of African Americans and comedy in that context, making sense out of nonsense, but we got to talk about it. And uh, I think it's very important, so I want to thank you for that. For those of you that are going to Dallas, Texas with us in February to celebrate the 40th anniversary of Pastor Freddie Haynes, there is a information session right after church. Uh, and it's going to be in the Family Life Center. I am so grateful to you uh, because there are in excess of about 90 of you going on that day. Uh, Freddie has been, he's a friend of mine, and he's been coming here for at least 20 years, and we are closing out his celebration, and I thought it would be good uh, to, I'm, I'm going anyhow, but it would be wonderful to share that with some of you. We're going to make a weekend of it, and it is on Super Bowl Sunday. Um, and we're going, we figured that uh, we would be in Dallas, Texas, making our own Super Bowl party for the Eagles in Dallas, Texas. Um, we just need the Eagles to do their part. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name. But, but we are going to have a party in whatever hotel we're in with just the 90 of us, and we're going to hang out and just have a good time. And so I'm looking forward to that. Thank you so very, very much. Um, we've got a lot going on this morning, so I'm going to cut those announcements there. We do thank God for yesterday, the leadership of Dr. Waller and our She's My Sister conference. Thank God for... Friday night, the men's only portion, Reverend Jerome Glover, Reverend Leroy Miles, uh, our men's leader, Tony Talaferro, amen. Thank God for them and their uh, investment in the men. And then, of course, all day yesterday. As we get ready to go to God in prayer, I did want to invite our sister, Pastor Erica Numdo, just to greet us and help us understand what's going on in South Africa, uh, what you can be praying for. We are taking another trip in December. We will spend uh, two weeks there with two separate groups, and if you're interested. So the impact of Enon in South Africa will be for two weeks. We're not asking any of you to do a whole two weeks. We're asking uh, those that would go. You might go the first or the second week. Uh, and so we'll be hearing more. But I'm going to ask Pastor Erica now, would you receive her to just come greet us, help us understand what's happening on the mission field, and then we're going to go to God in prayer. Amen. Good morning, Inan. Wow, it's good to be back home. Amen. I thank God for the opportunity that, um, to stand here before you. Greet Pastor Waller and Sister Waller and every leader this morning, you know. God is awesome. He's amazing. He's amazing. Telling you God is amazing, God. And I want to bring you greetings from Cape Town, from our your Enon family in Cape Town, South Africa, in Pretoria, in Belleville, in Zebra, all over where we have locations. I bring you greetings from them. And I just want to say to you, family, great things are happening in the kingdom of God. Great, great things. And I thank God that we can be part of it. So what's happening in, in Cape Town for the past two years, God has been gracious to us. A lot has been going on. We were moving, we were moving. Um, six, five of us were also part of the coaching sessions with Pastor Waller, and it was great. And I just need to do, add this, you know, I used my skills that I got from him and to obtain something. You know, he gave us some skills, and I use that, and I thank God for him. Um, yes, yes, you can give him, you know, I, I thank God we've learned, and, 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 and yes, yes, God has been good. So besides that, we also added 
another two more um, rehabilitation facilities. One is in Pretoria where I'm overseeing that one, so I'm between Pretoria and Cape Town at the moment. So what I have is a woman and children facility um, in, in Pretoria. And please pray for me for that because I need a facility. I need, please pray for me for that. And also, there are African countries, you know, in South Africa, we have a lot of countries in Africa that is also now part of the Enon family. So we have a lot to, our family is just growing and growing and growing. You know, after COVID and, and, and you are, God has just opened doors to us. So Enon family is big now. It's very, very big. And um, I thank God for my husband. I bring you greetings from him. You see, I'm a big girl now. I'm traveling alone without him. <laughs> and I brought my, my daughter with me, Natalie. She's overseeing our um, schools program. She's also in operations. So we have Hope Revolution that is playing. I, I, I know a lot of you guys are on um, Facebook and all that, and then you see Hope, Hope Revolution is always there. They're busy. They're doing, they're doing outreaches. They, they're just all over. And Hope Revolution, um, we give training in substance abuse. You know, we've we, we done a lot. But something beautiful happened last year. We signed an MOU with the Nelson Mandela University to do a short course leadership training. So that is part of their curriculum now at the university. So that is one thing that Hope Revolution also have achieved last year. And then... Um, we have a lot of, you know, all over these people that, 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 is, that wants to know what is Hope Revolution all about. So they started in churches all over, especially in churches. We started the Hope Revolution because that gives people an opportunity not to enter into a rehabilitation center. So the church handle most of the stuff. So that is what we're doing during the day. And also last year, December, um, every year December, we have Christmas in the park, which Enon is part of. And I thank God for the group that came last year. You know, because of the help of Enon, we could feed almost 5,000 children. And that's a lot. That is a lot. You know, the group that, that came, um, they, they were busy. They were busy every night on the streets doing ministry. They were helping all over. And, and I really want to encourage you, this year, come. Come. You know, this well, last year was the first time that we, they did not allow us to have it in one place. So we had 11 locations where we had the Christmas in the park. Eleven locations. And that is where our people are. That is where our Enon people are. So we had it there with them. So, um, and it worked for us. It worked for us because we could reach them. You see, they were close to everything. And we shared everything together. The children had their party packet, their food, their gift. That is, you know, they received that, and I wish you could have been there. Thank you once again to the group that came. Uh, it was a small group, but I trust God this year it's going to be a bigger one. And please pray for us. We, with all this, there's also a lot of challenges. With everything that is going on, a lot of challenges that is coming. You know, as the ministry grow bigger and bigger, you know that is also where the challenges come with. Um, I was also, and also pray for me, I was busy with the registration of the um, women's center. Uh, it's done, all the papers are in, so when I go back, I'm trusting God for an answer feedback, just to get everything, you know, sorted. And please pray that God will put the right people on our path. That's so important, the right people with the heart 
for the ministry. And that is what I need, the right people. You know, I was crazy enough to open this thing all by myself, all by myself. I, I started and, and then God opened doors. But I thank the Lord. Yes, never let us down. And once again, Enon, thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Thank you for your support. We really, really appreciate it. May the Lord bless you. Amen. Amen. As we go to God in prayer, the reason for those 11 locations is because those locations cross over turf of gangs and it would have been not safe to bring everybody together because of that. And so we bless God for the field and we ask you to be in prayer as you consider um, going this year as we expand that work. So let the words of my mouth, and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Lord, we come to you to just say thank you before anything. Thank you for giving us the ability to be able to just praise you and say thank you and to love on you and everyone next to us, in front of us, and to the side of us, Lord. Lord, we pray for our ministries in this church. We pray for She's My Sister. We pray for the conference that happened over the weekend and the information that we were given that we can go out and do what we have to do to be able to protect and save this community. Thank you to everyone, the panelists, Sister Waller, that came up and showed out and just gave us the information that we really needed that we didn't know that we needed. Lord, I pray for everybody under the sound of my voice and to prepare them for the week that we have coming ahead of us. I pray for the first family and I pray for just the betterness of the community that we're living in, Lord. And I just want to say thank you again. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. and thank our God. Today we get to, get to go old school uh, because we have one baby 
And so we are grateful, uh, and we are grateful for Richard Michael Klinkscales. And we're going to invite his parents to come and bring Richard and Michael. Richard, come on, amen, amen. Amen. We're going to invite the village that is with the Klinkscales to stand, those that are with this child, and for our leadership, ministers, deacons, deaconess, trustees. I'm excited today because it gets, gives us an opportunity. You know, we have a lot of babies, so we tend to put them in groups. And this time we have this Richard. And we're grateful for him because it reminds us of what the intent of this day really was. It's a moment when we call the attention of the whole community on this one child and we make a commitment as a community to this child. There's a lot of language that is used. I'm sure someone said, I'm going to uh, the baby's christening. I'm going to the baby's baptism because public Christianity in America tends to take on Catholic language. But this is not a baptism. This is not a christening. It's a dedication. We believe that in the spirit of Hannah in 1 Samuel, when she gave birth to her child, she was so grateful to have that child that she brought him back to the Lord. She said, because the Lord has given this child to me, I'm giving him back to the Lord. That's ultimately what parenting is. From the day we give birth, we're giving our children back to God. We're making a commitment that says, God has allowed me to be a part of what God is doing in the earth. God willed that there be a man named Richard. He decided to let the two of you be on the program with him to raise this man named Richard. And so the first act in the community is for you to stand in front of the community and in front of God and say, we promise to do our part because there's a part in it that God is going to do. There are some things that are in Richard right now because God just put it in. If Richard is a leader, it's in there. Whether he leads a gang or a corporation is up to you because he's going to lead. It's about how you raise him. It's because he is whatever's in there. It's in there. The Bible says that the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. So there are certain things that are on the hard drive of his soul and God has given you parents the passwords to open it up. And so we ask you, do you dedicate yourself to the cause of Christ and to the position of parent for which you have been called? Amen. The village is standing today. You're standing because whatever the configuration, this is not a church that only lets couples stand here. There could be a couple standing in front of me. There could be a mother with her child. There could be a father with uh, his child. But whatever that configuration it is, it is not enough. The nuclear family alone is not enough to raise a child. We need the extended family, even more so when you are people in a context where the culture is not friendly to who we are. You've been asked to stand because there will come a time in Richard's life where your good parenting, along with adolescence, will produce a person in your house you don't know where they came from. And it's a part of the process. Good parenting produces a 
independent thinker. That's good. Adolescence is a chemical imbalance. And because of that, those questions and ideas that come out of him will be interesting. He's going to want to try some things out. And what he's going to need to find out is that his father is not the only man in his village that thinks that way. He's going to want to come over your house and get away with watching Power 25, raising Canaan's grandkids. <laughs> he's going he's to want to watch that stuff. And he thinks he's going to be able to get away from it because he's not at his mom's house. But he's supposed to find out that his auntie is as crazy as his mother. That that's just what it is to be a clink scale. And so we ask you, as the extended family, as the village, do you dedicate yourself to the cause of Christ, to the position of partnering with these parents in the raising of Richard? Amen. It's true, it takes a whole village to raise a child, but we believe it takes a church to raise a village. It is important for Richard that at some point, he not only see his father and his mother, he not only see people related to him living this stuff out, but it's an actual important part of his development that there be other friends and other people who are not in his family, but they believe the same stuff. They do the same thing. In fact, we said that this is not a baptism. We are Baptists. We believe in believers' baptism by immersion. And so one day we want him to come walking down one of these aisles saying, Jesus, I'm glad to meet you for myself. And that will happen as a result of having friends in the faith and having safe adults who are not his family to test out his assumptions of life. And we want to be that. And so the deacons and deaconess and trustees and ministers are standing because we want to be that safe space for you. It's with that understanding that we prepare our hearts to take him to the throne of grace in prayer. God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for Richard. We thank you for being the gift that you've given to the Clinksdales. We thank you for his health. We thank you for his life. We thank you for the promise on his life. Lord, we pray that you will protect him from evil, protect him from that which is not of you. And we pray, oh God, that you would use him to your glory. God, we recognize that he's being raised in some dark and difficult times, and he's being raised in times that because of his color, because of his gender, that he will have doors locked in front of him and ceilings placed above his head. But we thank you that you open doors, and we thank you that you make ways out of no ways, and we thank you that what is for him is for him, oh God. And so, God, we pray that you would use him to your glory. And we pray, oh God, that you would protect him from those things that set themselves up against the knowledge of Christ in his life. And then, God, I thank you for being allowed to be on the front end in his life. Let some unborn pastor yet in another time stand up to tell us all the great things that Richard has done. But until that time, God, walk with him. Use him to your glory. And God will be ever so mindful to give you all the praise all the glory and all the honor it's in the matchless marvelous and majestic name of jesus the christ and for his sake we do pray let us all say amen amen, amen, amen. and amen. amen thank you buddy amen amen amen, amen. 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 amen.
Amen. Amen. So it's been 15 years since I could hold one. Amen. Amen. Let's bless God for this blessing in our family today. Amen. Amen. And amen. Well, listen, saints, one of the things that we have always said that we would do, um, education is premium and it is important. And we won't ever apologize for taking time out to affirm our young people in education. We don't apologize for those days when a football team wins and we bring them all up here and or a soccer team or cheerleaders and we believe that that's important too. But the 21st century holds no place for unprepared African Americans. We have to uh, educate. We have to hear this. Gone are the days when graduating from high school and just stepping into the workforce without any other training. Um, those days are gone. This is not a suggestion that everybody has to be a college graduate, but it is a suggestion that we must be lifelong learners. And whatever you're going to do, even if you're going to have your own business and you're going to fix cars or you're going to do hair, whatever it is, you're going to need to be credentially qualified and you're going to need to be prepared to step into that season. And so we will always affirm those that are in school. And one of the ways that we do that is with the pastor's honor roll. We're going to ask that our scholarship ministry would come at this time and lead us through this. And then when we get to the end, I will come back to celebrate the school that has the most scholars. Good morning, E9. My name is Denise Bird, and I am from the Education Support Ministry. I am the servant leader. You know, we get a little cross, crisscross. You know, we, we all do interchangeable work. So I am here to introduce our pastor's honor roll today. Also, before I, want, before I introduce them, I want to say thank you to Reverend Murphy. A big thank you to the audiovisual ministry and the dynamic education support ministry for all the hard work that we put into creating Pastor's Honor Roll. So, as we get ready to display our students, the students will introduce themselves. We're going to cheer them on. They're going to come up here, line up in front as they hear their names. All right, y'all, let's go. Hello, my name is Jonah Hunt. I'm a senior at Germantown Academy High School. And one Bible scripture that I live my life by is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens me. 3.19. Hi, my name is Tyus Pearson. I'm a sophomore student at Lincoln Hall High School. In my spare time, I like to watch my favorite sports team, the Philadelphia Phillies. One interesting fact about me is that I like to draw specifically about nature and also pain about nature. 3.24. Hello, my name is Cameron Tillman. I'm a ninth grader who attends Parkway Center City Middle College. My favorite season is winter. I like winter because of the snow and because my birthday occurs during the season. I first started liking winter because I would go outside during snow days and play with friends or family. Then I also enjoy the breaks because I get to spend time with myself and do the things I enjoy. 3.34, Kennedy Gardner, ninth grade, the Shiftley School, 3.39. Lauren Ayers, 10th grade, Agnes Erin School, 3.43. Hi, my name is Marcel Camper. I'm a senior at Springfield Township High School. My career aspirations are to become an athletic trainer. As a multi-sport athlete, I play ice hockey, football, and track, and I want to teach the kids the importance of health and wellness. 3.50. Hi, my name is Francie Joseph, and I'm currently a 10th grader attending Hill Freeman World Academy. A scripture that is important to me is Psalms 39, verse 7, and it reads, And now, O Lord, for what do I wait? My hope is in you. This scripture means a lot to me right now is because one of my resolutions for 2024 is to have patience. Patience takes a lot, and I know that the Lord is always on our side in this aspect. I want to take more time with 
my peers, with myself, and with every decision I'm making, and put my trust in the Lord. A fun fact about me is that I'm a proud Haitian American, child of two immigrants who worked very hard to get me where I am today. 3.56, Sierra Dansler, Philadelphia High School for Girls, 3.60. Hi, my name is Kato Mangum and I'm a senior at Julia R. Masterman. If I could meet a famous person, I would meet Jackie Robinson. As an African-American baseball player, he's created so many opportunities for me. And if I could ask him a question, I would ask how I can use the principles that he used back then in today's game. 3.61, Akai Carter, 11th grade, Emotep Charter High School, 3.64. Hi, I'm Andrew Dawson, currently a senior at Central High School. My favorite time of the year is summer. Summer is my favorite time of the year because it's the one time that us students can truly live stress-free from school, and now it's the time where a lot of my friends are coming home from college for a good amount of time, so it's a good time. 3.64. Hi, everybody. My name is Jayla Coleman. I'm in 11th grade, and I go to Philmont Christian Academy. I always love to help out other people whenever I can, so with that, a dream career of mine would be a social worker and helping inmates find housing and jobs when they complete their sentence. 3.69. Hi, my name is Sky Harrison. I am currently a 12th grader at Edmonton Senior High School. One thing I like to do in my spare time is I like to do hair and I'm going to be a licensed cosmetologist by June. 3.70. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Parker. I'm in 11th grade at Calvary Christian Academy. What I like to do in my spare time is draw and do 3D puzzles. I also enjoy playing music on my flute and piano, and I find it interesting to study stars on my telescope. 3.71 Kalia Williams Tamazi, Fair World Academy, 3.72 Malika Staten, 9th grade, The Madari School, 3.74. Hi, my name is Joshua Scott. I go to Roman Catholic High School and I'm in the 12th grade. In my spare time, I like to read books and my favorite book is The Hobbit. I also enjoy to run track for Roman. 3.75. Hi, I'm Bryce. I'm a sophomore at Central High School and in my free time, I like to edit websites and videos as well as read comics. 3.78. Hi, my name is Nia Kennedy. I am in 11th grade and I attend Springfield Township High School. My career aspiration is to become a travel nurse. The reason that I want to pursue this career is because I want to travel the world while helping others. I've already been to Paris, but I would love to go back. 3.78. My name is Jaden Black. I'm a sophomore at the William Penn Charter High School. And if I could meet anyone famous dead or alive, it would be Huey P. Newton, the co-founder of the Black Panther Party. I just want to ask him what he thought of our society today. 3.79. Hi, my name is Nia Curry. I'm a senior at Friends Central, and in the fall, I'll be attending Howard University, majoring in accounting, and a career goal that I have is to become a forensic accountant. 3.79. Hi, my name is Erin Hawthorne. I'm a ninth grader at George Washington Carver of Engineering and Science. Um, I have two career aspirations. One of them is to become a professional soccer player. One of my favorite soccer players at the moment is Crystal Dunn. And I would like to become a professional soccer player because I've been playing soccer since I was four, starting here at Enon. And my second career aspiration is to become something like a doctor or anything in the medical field. 3.79. Hi, my name is Jada Young. I'm in 12th grade and I attend Edmonton Senior High School. In my spare time, I play tennis and after college, I want to become a professional tennis player. 3.79. Hi, my name is Melanie Zamichelli. I'm a ninth grader at Williamstown High School and I want to be an OBGYN. I feel like I can achieve those things with hard work, determination, and Jesus by my side. 3.79. Milan Smalls, 12th grade, Central High School. 3.81. Hi, I'm Christopher Kauser. I am a sophomore at Upper Dublin High School. I have to say my favorite season of the year is the winter because my birthday is in the winter. Um, I like the cold and there are no bugs. 3.87. Hi, my name is Peyton Gooden. I'm currently a senior at Central High School and a fun fact about me is that I love to dance and step and in my near future, I aspire to be a lawyer. 3.88. 
3.88. My name is Jane Little Tinsley. I'm a studious achiever. I'm currently in 12th grade senior. I attend Roman Catholic High School. And if I could meet anybody, the past or present, it'd be Stephen Curry because I've always been passionate about basketball my whole life and he's always been a mentor for me growing up. 3.88. Kaya Irvin, ninth grade, Sheltonham High School. 3.89. Hi, my name is Lori Kennedy. I'm in ninth grade and I attend Central High School. I also play field hockey for Central's field hockey team. When I get older, I would like to become a defense lawyer. I'd like to become a defense lawyer so I can help others and get justice for all. This can help make an impact in so many people's lives. 3.89. Hi, my name is Joshua Spivy and I'm a senior at Mass Community Charter School. And if I could talk to any, any famous person, I would talk to AJ Green from the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, because he cemented my love for football. And if I could ask him anything, I would just ask him why he left the Bengals, you know? 3.90. Hi, my name is Kyla Young. I'm in 10th grade and I attend Abington Senior High School. In my spare time, I like to play tennis, sing, and play video games. My favorite video game is Fortnite. 3.91. Hi, my name is Kaylin Cox. I am a 10th grader at Saw Agricultural High School. I hope to become a plant biologist, studying the anatomy of plants, finding out what uses they have for us, such as medicine, food nutrition, and cosmetology. I hope that this information will help solve many problems in society. 3.93. My name is Gabriel Scott, and I'm a sophomore at Abington Senior High School. Uh, my favorite time of year has to be winter, just because the brisk chill in the air and the, something about the whole world going dormant is so calming to me. Uh, one fun fact about me is that I'm an aspiring artist and I like to pencil draw. 3.93 Hi, my name is Jada Booz and I'm a current 12th grader at Mary Mercy Academy. For my career, I aspire to be a criminal justice attorney. I'm interested in law, justice, and specifically civil rights, and I want to devote my life's work to fixing the injustices in our current criminal justice system. 3.94 Hello, my name is Jordan Scott. I'm currently a freshman at Roman Catholic High, and one thing I do in my spare time is running track, specifically the 200. And another thing is reading web novels. 3.94 Braden M. Jolly 12th grade, Lower Marion High School, 3.97. Hello, my name is Andrea Santos and I am a determined person. I go to George Washington Carver High School and I'm a junior. A scripture that grounds me is Philippians 4.13. When I am in doubt or feel like throwing in a towel, I remind myself that I can do all things through Christ in me, who strengthens me. 3.99. Hello, my name is Desire Pinckney. I am an 11th grade student at Franklin Town Charter High School. My favorite season is the spring. During the spring is where I personally get to lay down from all my academic achievements and get settled for the summer. I love the spring because it's a mix of bipolar weather, but it's perfect for me. 4.00. My name is Zoe McNair and I am a senior at the Gloucester County Institute of Technology. I think if I could meet any famous person from past or present, I would want to meet William Shakespeare. When I was in eighth grade, I read Hamlet for my English class, and I've been hooked on Shakespeare ever since. All of his works are different in some way, and I think it'd be really interesting to sit down and talk to him about his creative genius and where he got some of his ideas from. 4.05. Hi, my name is Eric Brown, and my favorite season is spring because it's not too hot like in the summer, and it's not too cold like in the winter. It is just right and it's warm. 4.06. Hi, my name is Dayani Massey, and I'm currently a 12th grader at Hill Freeman Ward Academy, and my ultimate career aspiration is to be a leader and to influence my society. I plan to become a diplomat and to spread peace, enjoy, and represent the United States and the United Nations. 4.07. Hi, my name is Nyla Bratcher and I'm a 10th grader at Little Flower Catholic High School for Girls. My favorite thing to do is read. The last book I read was Macbeth and I love to spend time with my friends. 4.08 Hi, my name is Joel Spivy and I'm a senior at Mass Community Charter School. My favorite season is summer because I have more free time to spend with my friends and family, although I do like the beginning of fall because of the weather. 4.08 Hello, my name is Kenny Granison Jr., a 12th grader at Springfield Township High School. 
I love STEM, so my career aspiration is to become a computer engineer. Engineering will allow me to innovate and solve real world problems that will help and impact the lives of others positively. 4.11. Hi, my name is Alana Thompson. I'm a 10th grader at Philmont Christian Academy, and in my spare time, I love to draw, paint, and read. The last book I read was Billy Summers by Stephen King. 4.11. Hi, my name is Asan Mangum. Uh, I'm a senior at Julia R. Masterman High School. My career aspiration is to be a food scientist in order to research and develop and create uh, healthier foods and put those in local grocery stores. 4.13. Hi, my name is Layla Graham. I'm in 11th grade and I go to the Creative and Performing Arts School of Philadelphia. My aspirations is to have my own production and be an actress, but also to help out kids who look like me who do not know how to get their name out there as far as acting, modeling, or even music. 4.16. Hi, my name is William Grant. I'm in 12th grade and I attend Northeast High School. A career aspiration of mine is to become a hotel manager and then later in life start my own hotel chain. Why I wanna do this is because I have a feeling like a soft spot just for helping people. And I always thought I love to travel. I could travel the world, but I can also help people feel safe and feel stable while they travel. 4.16. Hello, my name is Madison Sample, and I'm currently a 10th grader at North Penn High School. My career aspirations is to do something that helps the people around me and enhances the lives of everyone and that makes me happy. Although I do not know what I want to do exactly, I know that I want to change the world. 4.16. Hi, my name is Carissa Walton. I'm a current senior at Carver Engineering and Science. As for my career aspirations, I'm not exactly sure what occupation I'm going to pursue, but I know I want to use science in the medical field to help people. 4.17. Hi, my name is Kendall Nelson and I'm a junior at Cheltenham High School. If I could meet one celebrity, I'd meet Lin-Manuel Miranda because he's brought history to life in a way that people like me can enjoy, but mostly so that I could recite the entirety of Hamilton to him so that I could secure my spot as Angelica on Broadway. One interesting fact about me is that I play on two varsity softball teams and I'm a three-time state medalist in track and field. 4.19. Hi, my name is Summer Good and I'm currently a sophomore at Masterman High School. I love to read and the last book I read was Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. And in the future, I would love to be a veterinarian. 4.20. Lauren Maynard, 12th grade, Monsieur Bonner and Archbishop Pendergrass Catholic High School, 4.22. Hi, my name is London Montague. I am a sophomore at Sheltonham High School, and in the future, I want to be a video game designer or work in computer science. My favorite video games are either The Sim, Stardew Valley, or Halo Multiplayer. 4.23. Hi, my name is Morgan Hicks. I'm currently a senior at Science Leadership Academy at Bieber. Go Rockets. Um, my favorite time of the year is autumn, mainly because it's a happy medium between being warm and cold because I don't like being too warm and I don't like being too cold. And it's also the time of my favorite flavor, which is apple. Apple pie is my favorite dessert. And last but not least, and most importantly, my birthday is during that season, so. 4.26. Hi, my name is Susanna Montague and I'm a senior at Cheltenham High School. In the future, after I graduate from the college, I plan to have a degree in biology. With that degree, I'm going to go into genetics and then eventually become a geneticist. 4.26. Christina Mahoner, 12th grade, Monsieur Bonner and Archbishop Pendergraft Catholic High School, 4.27. Hello, my name is Nicholas Coitz. I'm an 11th grader at Sheltonham High School. I aspire to be a police officer, and I want to be a police officer so that I can protect and serve my community by allowing its residents to feel safe and protected. And I currently attend Eastern Center for Arts and Technology for the Protective Services Program. 4.30. And introducing the student with the highest GPA of 4.30. Three, nine. Hi, my name is Jordan Quezon. I'm in 11th grade and I go to Philmont Christian Academy. I've always loved science and math, so I would love to go into engineering. I've always been intrigued by the way things are built, especially rockets and planes, so I would love to work at NASA as an aerospace engineer. 4.30.
and amen. I promise you, it doesn't matter how large this gets, we're always going to take some time. And if all we have to do is have a call to worship, read all their names, and then give a benediction, that'll be what that service was. It's just that important to celebrate our young people and thank God for the gift that is them. Congratulations. Amen. And as always, we look, we look to... <laughs> We also look to find out where our young people are going. There are 35 different schools that, that just all over Philadelphia that represent these uh, children. But this year, the one school that had the most of our children uh, with the highest GPA is Sheltonham High School. And we celebrate Sheltonham High School. And they, um, Sheltonham will receive a, a gift from us in their name uh, so that that principal can do something for those young people. So I'm going to ask, as they get ready to go on back, would you help me celebrate our scholars for this year? Amen, amen. Put your hands together. These are our children. Don't let the news tell you who our children are. We know that our children are some bad brothers and sisters. Amen, amen, and amen. You can go on back to your seats now. We thank God for you. And I just found out, and I think for this moment, this is a good moment to do this. I'm calling an audible. You know, we're going on Wednesday uh, to see Pearly Victorious uh, because Leslie Odoms is a, a brother and friend and from Philadelphia. Uh, but because of Reverend Nicole Phillips, there is another brother that I have grown to love, got a chance to meet. Uh, you have seen him on Broadway as well. You have seen him in Hamilton. You have seen him in the, uh, the Michael Jackson story. His name is Quentin Darrington, uh, and he's here this morning. And I just can't let him be here and not get to the mic and do something, whatever it is. You come on up here. Help us celebrate these young people. You all know Quentin Darrington. He's on Broadway. And I'm just going to ask him to sing a piece of something He's a brother that loves God and is representing the faith in the context of the arts world. And we just bless God. Didn't know you were here, but just come on, do something, then we'll have an offering. Yes, sir. <laughs> so good to see you. Yes, sir. All right. Let's continue to worship our God together. Amen. How can I say thanks for the things you have done for me things so undeserved yet you gave to prove your love for me the voices of one million express my gratitude all that I am and ever hope to be I owe it all to thee To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God.
more time with a loud voice, the entire church. Come on. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. For everything. To God be the glory. For the peace He has done. Bless your holy name, God. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Enon Tabernacle Baptist Church, a place where people encounter God. We're so glad you chose to join us in worship. In the midst of such uncertainty in our world, we are thankful for the technology that allows us to gather virtually and in person to worship and to hear God's Word. Your gift helps us reach the world for the cause of Christ. Enon Family, here are three ways to give online. You can visit our website, www.enontab.org backslash donate to give. You can text the word ENONTAB to 77977 on your cellular device. Or you can download and use our mobile app, ENONTAB. Give thanks with a grateful heart. God loves a cheerful giver. And now, please join us in the Litany for Giving. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with measure you use, it will be measured to you. Therefore, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is time to give. It is tithing and giving time. To whom does the tithe belong? Who should tithe? Why should we tithe? How much should we tithe? What is God's promise to the tither? What kind of giver does the Lord love?
let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before we thanksgiving our heart, giving you thanks and praise. We thank you, O Lord, for these gifts, Father God. We pray that you may bless them so they be, become a play for your kingdom. Now, Father God, there is a word for you, Father God, to, from you, Father God. I pray for Pastor Waller today, Father God, as you come with your word, Father God. We pray, O Lord, that you will strengthen his, strengthen his lungs, Father God. Press down on him, Father God, with the Holy Spirit, Father God, to deliver your word to, we, to each and every congregation, Father God. I pray, O Lord, that we will be listeners, Father God, after all, not only be listeners, but be doers of your word. In this and everything I ask in your precious name. Amen.
Hallelujah. You're the king and you're invited to come in. God, we bless you and we thank you. We invite you to be the Holy One of Israel who inhabits the praises of his people. Lord, we thank you for the witness of your work in our children. Thank you for allowing us to hold a baby and think of the possibilities of the future. Thank you for Richard. Thank you for the witness of these children and the reflection of their parents. Thank you, God, for the gift of Quentin. Thank you for allowing him to remind us that you get the glory, God. To you be the glory. And God, we're reminded that we must invite you in, and we do. And now, God, we sit with anticipation to hear a word from you. Lord, I've studied, but I need your strength. I prepared, but I need your power. I'm willing and I want to, but only you can make me able. Silently now I wait for thee. Ready, my Lord, thy will to see. Open mine eyes and illumine me. Spirit divine. Amen. 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 We bless and thank our God. I want you to know um, that next Sunday afternoon, for those of you that would like to meet a deacon or your deacon to understand uh, your biblical house, to even ask questions about Touchpoint, there's going to be an expo of our deacons and that whole thing in the Family Life Center right after church. If you're sitting right now saying, I don't know who my deacon is, you could go to the expo and find that out. If you are working with the app and something is bothering you about that or how this stuff works, all of that will happen on next week right after church. I thank you ahead of time for those of you that will join us at Bethlehem this afternoon uh, for the uh, Martin Luther King Day service. I'd like to invite your attention to, and I'm going to read uh, the first two verses of James 1. You've already heard this in its entirety, but I'd like to read these verses that say, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. This is the word of the Lord. And I want you to help me put a tag on. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's all good. That's what I want to talk about this morning. It's all good. It's all good. Take some, take some getting there, but at the end of the day, Dewey, it's, it's all good. Have you ever thought about this? All of our heroes sort of end with tragic death. I mean, everybody we celebrate, everybody we point towards, everybody we say we want to be like, they all kind of end with tragic death. I mean, Jesus crucified. Stephen stoned. Paul beheaded. Peter crucified upside down. Let me come on a little closer. Nat Turner down in a hail of bullets. W.B. Du Bois, you do remember Du Bois, he left America, moved to Ghana with his head down saying the Negro will never win in America. Martin King, assassinated. Metcar Evers, assassinated. I could keep going, could be asking, what is it we trying to do again? I'm, I'm reminded of a story, and I've told this story before, uh, and it's Donnie McClurkin's to tell. He, during the height, it's probably 10 years ago, the height of his uh, career, uh, someone walked up to Donnie McClurkin and said, Pastor McClurkin, I would like for you to pray for me that I can have the same impact in my music ministry that you have had. Uh, would you pray that God would anoint me uh, as he has anointed you? And Donnie McClurkin said, are you sure you want me to pray that? She said, yes, pray 
for me that God would anoint me and use me as he has used you. So he grabbed her hands, and this is his story. He said, so he began to pray, Lord, I pray uh, that this woman be sexually abused, and I pray that she wrestle with role confusion, and I pray uh, that she have friends turn on her. She snatched her hands back. She said, I don't, I don't want you to pray all that. He said, well, do you want what I got? Do you want to experience what I've experienced? There, there's a cost to this. There is a cost to what God does. You know, often there are a lot of us running around here talking about how we want to be used of God and how we want God to, to use us and open up doors. But I need you to know that it's not all kicks and giggles when God has his hands on you. Need to understand that when you choose the life of living for God and you choose the counterculture nature of the Christian life, you will necessarily bump into the reality uh, that this world does not want you. Y'all gonna get mad at me. Jesus put it this way, the world hated me. And if the world is going to hate me, it's going to hate you as well. Let me check some gray hair. Is there anybody in here that's found out that you don't always fit everywhere because of your profession of faith? You're not always accepted because you love the Lord. And, and the truth of the matter is it gets rough sometimes, but somebody else in here can de de declare it's still all good. I mean, when you suffer for the cause of Christ, Christ, God is always there on the other side, and there is a blessing on the other side of through, yet you still have to go through it. It's going to get quiet in here today, but I need somebody to get comfortable with being able to look at trouble, trials, tribulation, and be able to say, it's all good. In fact, there's somebody in here who's been through enough to know that when you see it coming, you can start shouting right now because you know that on the other side of this, God's got something waiting on me. I just got to hold on to see what the end, as grandma used to say, is going to be. It's all good. I'm not trying to scare somebody away, but neither do I want you to have this primrose view of the Christian life. The reality is we live in a society uh, that thinks we're crazy. We live in a society that subscribes to a different set of rules and values than we do. And by dint of that fact, you're going to bump into the devil every now and then. That's really what James is writing about as he writes his letter. This is James, the brother of Jesus. He's well into his senior years now, and he's writing to a community to help them understand what's going on. Now, appreciate this. It's first century Palestine. Roman occupation has taken over, and Christians are being killed for their faith, they are being abused. In fact, if you were riding on your chariot one night and you were a Christian, you may very well begin to walk, uh, begin to ride down and see a, what you think is a bonfire and come to find out that that is a friend of yours having been set on fire by uh, the Roman officials. It is very possible that you could hear of one of your friends having been crucified, of one of your friends just having been taken, or find out that the regular vis uh, vigors and vicissitudes of life in your own life are met with obstacles just because you are a Christian. It's in that context that James writes this letter, and it is a circular letter because it opens up by going to the 12 tribes in the diaspora. So he's writing to this community, but to this community as they are scattered along the ways. And the first thing he says is, don't worry about it. Understand it's going to happen. 
Understand that being a Christian means that you are going to bump into trials, and the King James calls them temptations. Because the imp and then he says various kinds because sometimes it's spiritual and sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it is relational. He says, but get used to it. This comes with what it means to be a child of God. And understand, though, that it never happens in a vacuum and it is never going to happen without context. Because whatever it is, God is going to use it for his glory, and it is ultimately going to produce something in you because life is not about what happens to you. Life is about what it produces in you. In fact, if we had time, we could probably find a little shout right here for the people in here who've got some distance between it and today, and you can now have this testimony. I didn't like it when I was going through it, but I am glad that I went through it because where I am today, I wouldn't know what I know. I wouldn't have what I have. I wouldn't be who I am if it had not gone that way to God be the glory. And so I've learned how to say it's all good. And then James is saying to all of us that when you bump into this stuff, you've got to learn how to nail it on the front end. It's all good. Well, a couple of things and a couple of things I need to hold in my mind that help me say it's all good and I'm going to get out of your way. The first thing that comes up for me is that I can say it's all good because whenever it happens, whenever this stuff happens, uh, it can be a sign that I'm still on the team. Uh, you missed it. Let me see if I can make it plain. Uh, he says, count it all joy. And the reason that he's saying count it all joy and the reason that he writes this letter is James is trying to normalize for his community that being in a countercultural community means that periodically you're going to bump into the stuff. Understand that being a Christian means that you are going to bump into the world because the world is different. We have a different world view. We think differently about many things, and because of that, we will be at odds with what is popular in society. In fact, we have to learn to find the balance between incarnation and assimilation. Let me see if I can make it plain. We are to have an incarnational uh, theology or incarnational ministry. That means my language today should in some ways um, be wrapped up in the culture so that you can understand. I, need, I don't need to speak King James English up here, and I need to uh, have some uh, Philadelphia in me today. I need to be relevant to the context, but I should not be so relevant that you can't find the distinctiveness in you. I mean, you did come to church this morning, and it doesn't need to look like a rap concert in here. You did come to church this morning, and so it does not need to look like just any old auditorium in here. There's a reason for some of the things we do and the way we do them. In fact, let me just go on and suggest this. When somebody says to you, man, you so cool, I ain't even know you was a deacon. You so cool, I ain't even know you was a preacher. That is not a compliment. That, that, that's not a con. Well, you you so cool. I ain't even know you went to church. I mean, you just chill like that. If somebody can be around you for a while and they don't even know that you love the Lord, they don't even know that you go to church, that is not a compliment. In fact, we serve a guy named Jesus who, when he shows up, devils get mad. They, When he shows up in the Gadarenes, the devils came out. He didn't even do anything yet. And they say, why are you bothering us? In fact, sometimes get in trouble, Waller. Your very presence ought to Borrow, ought to bother some things because you stand for the most high God. 
Let me see if I can make it plain. Uh, Jesus said, a prophet is not without honor except in his own home. Sometimes you're going to find that your faith will cause you to bump into people because it is an inconvenience for them. My father used to put it this way. If you don't bump into the devil every now and then, it must be because you are walking with him. If you don't come at odds with the culture, it must mean that there is nothing distinctive and can I push it a little further? I believe that uh, the Bible would seem to suggest that if your presence is not bothering the demonic, then the demonic is not impacted by you. And if you ain't impacting the demonic, then the demonic doesn't have to do anything to you. Some of you are sitting around here saying, well, ain't nothing really going on with me. I'm not under any kind of attack. It could be because your presence is not under attack because you're not attacking anything. It could be if you ain't bothering the devil, the devil ain't going to bother you. Y'all going to get mad at me. Let me see if I can push it further. My, my son-in-law helps me with this. I've already had this conversation with him. We're going to live through this illustration. I'm going to break some rules. You're never supposed to make yourself the hero uh, of any illustration you use, but I am going to be the hero of this illustration uh, because it just fits in this moment. Some of you may have seen on Instagram there was a little basketball game that happened. Uh, and the reason for this basketball game is, and brothers in here will appreciate this, when a young man marries your daughter, uh, you want to make sure he knows it ain't soft like that in here and there will never be a problem. Uh, and if there is a problem, you need to know who your father-in-law really is. Every brother in here uh, knows what I just said. And I don't have any problems with Corey. I love Corey. He's a wonderful young man. So he and his boys got together and I got me and my men. We had a basketball game. <laughs> And we had a basketball game. And there have been other places that we've had to make sure that he understands who his father-in-law is. But anyhow, so we had to play this basketball game. We've been playing it since they were married. And so this was a very important year, kind of a tie-breaking year for us. Uh, and so he and his boys, who average age in their 30s, and me and my men, whose average age was 61, uh, we, we got together. And we were getting ready to play. So, to cut to the chase, we won. And so, that, that, that's the shout. We won. But I'm trying to help you understand about how the, devil, how the devil won't bother you if you ain't bothering him. So, very quickly, when Corey came out there, because he is a young guy, he's informed by Steph Curry, he calls himself going to shoot up these threes, right? He's going to shoot up these threes. And it became a, clear to me very early he was missing them all. I would say he was missing them all. And I said to myself, all right, here it is. He's missing. We got to the point where we're like, let him shoot. Let him shoot. Don't, don't even worry about it. Just let Corey shoot the ball. Because if we let him shoot, that means there are four of us under the basket versus three of them under the basket. Since we know he's going to miss, there will always be a rebound. And there's four of us that's going to get the rebound. And we're going to win. Let him shoot. Encourage him to shoot. Because his shooting ain't doing a thing to us. Let him shoot. You, you laughing, but sometimes the devil is saying to you, let him sing. Ain't no anointing. Let him serve. They ain't doing anything. There's no real power in it. Y'all going to get mad at me. But then there was this one boy on his team. His name was Chibi. Chibi was big. He was really big, and one time he got the ball in the paint, and when he got the ball in the paint, I jumped on his back. I jumped on Chibi's back because he was too close to scoring. And y'all are saying, well, that's cheating. It sure is. Who said that the devil plays fair? If Chibi was about to score, I was going to do whatever I had to do to keep him. Y'all wondering where I'm going. Some of y'all about to score in ministry, and that's why the devil is jumping all over your back. But it's all good. Y'all wondering where I'm going? You need to understand, you need some Bible. Do you remember over there the seven sons of Siva? The seven sons of Siva decided they were going to cast out a demon. And when they found a man that had a demon, they said, we adjure you in the name of Paul, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches. The demon looked at them and said, now Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. And if you were Jesus or Paul, I might be scared of you. But who are you? You never at Bible study. Who are you? You only come to worship once or twice a week, or once or twice a week. Who are you? 
You don't have any anointing on your life. You ain't bothering us. We don't need to bother you. Some of us need to get comfortable with the fact that if God is really using you, it's going to make the devil mad. And if the devil is going to be mad, he's going to attack you sometime. Let me find a shout. Is there anybody in here who's grateful for the attack because it is a reminder that you are on the team? Every time I get talked about, it's a reminder I'm making some devil mad. Every time the stuff comes in, I thank God that he'll set up a standard. Am I talking to anybody in here? You might be going through it, but God is keeping you in the midst of it. And so you can say it's all good. It's all good. It means I'm still on the team. It means I'm still on the team, but not only does it mean I'm still on the team, I can say it's all good because it means that God is growing me in some area. Notice what the text says. It says uh, that the try and count it all, count it all joy when you come into diverse temptations or trials because the trying of your faith produces steadfastness or patience. Let me see if I can make this thing plain. You know, when you pray for stuff, look out for what you prayed for. God does not use people to get things done. God uses things to get people done. I'm going to try it again. God does not use people to get projects done. God uses projects to get people done. So that there is a possibility that God intentionally puts you in things because God wants to produce something in you that's not there. That wasn't enough for you. Let me see if I can make plain. Here's what I do know about God. God will protect you. God will Move people out of your way that will harm you. God will fight your battles. But what about when he doesn't? What is that? What about when that person on your job is on your last nerve and they are truly messing with you? And then you do everything that my pastor said to do. You get your own oil. You walk around your cubicle, anoint everything. You go walking through your hallways, speaking those things that are not as though they are. And you do all that religious stuff, and they come back to work the next day. And not only that, they get promoted. What is going on when God seems to be helping my enemy? God didn't move them. God didn't get them out of the way. What is God doing in those moments? You need to understand when you pray for strength, don't think that God is just going to sprinkle strength on you. He's going to put you in a situation that causes you to have to grow in your strength. When you pray for patience, watch out for that one. God will put somebody in your life to try your patience. When you pray for, when you pray for any of these things, God doesn't just sprinkle it on you in the middle of the night. God will put you in some stuff so that you can learn just who God is. Am I talking to anybody in here that recognizes that what you know came from some stuff that you've been through? You need some Bible. Do you remember over there in the book of Exodus when they went to the Red Sea? Everybody loves the Red Sea story, but do you, do you realize they didn't get to the Red Sea because they were lost and God then got them out of that situation. God led them to the Red Sea. The Bible says, this is Exodus 14th chapter, when they were coming out, God, by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, God said, go this way. I'm following God. And the next thing I know, by God, 
God's command. I'm in the middle of a mountain range and my enemy is coming on me and I've got a Red Sea in front of me. I'm not here because I was disobedient. I'm not here because I did something wrong. I am here because God told me to do it and God says, I need you to see what I can do. Stand still. I put you in the situation and now that you've learned a lesson, I can get you out the situation. I wonder, am I talking to anybody in here? That wasn't enough for you. You need Genesis, the 22nd chapter. Do you remember when he told, uh, when he told uh, Abraham that I need you to go up on the mountain and I need you to sacrifice your son? I need you to grow in your faith. And so Abraham has to go up on a mountain where he's going to have a crisis of faith. And what is a crisis of faith? When the faith that you have is not big enough for the new place God is going to take you so that God has to put you in a situation that you will come to find out he's Jehovah Jireh. There he is up on the mountain not knowing where the sacrifice is going to come from and he says the Lord himself will provide and it is only when he began to act that God showed up but it was a crisis of faith. I'm talking to somebody right now that God has got you in a hot spot and you're not sure how it's going to work out because the faith that you have is not big enough for where God is taking you so he's put you in a space that's going to stretch you but in the stretching it's uncomfortable in the stretching it doesn't feel good but when you come out of the other side you're going to know some more about God can I check the room and find out if there's anybody in here that is grateful for the places that you have been because of what you learned through it. I know that God is a way maker. I know that God is a fighter. I know that God can do anything but fail. That wasn't enough. Touch your neighbor and say, here comes a shout. You know, I told y'all I'm going to be throwing these 30 and 60 at you all year. But I thank God there's some stuff I know at 60 that I did not know at 30. When I stepped into this church 30 years ago, I had a whole bunch of I believes. I believe he'll fight my battles. I believe he'll make ways out of no ways. I believe he'll reward his word. I believe he'll do anything but fail. But I don't use believe a lot in anymore because I got 30 years under here and I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roll. I know what it feels like to be dragged through the mud. I know what it feels like to have folk turn on you. I'm on this side of it now and I got a I know testimony. Is there anybody in here that's got some I know faith? I know he'll fight my battles. I know he'll do anything but fail. I know he's a way maker a heart fixer, a mind regulator. I know he can handle my enemies. I know he'll open doors that no one can shut. I know he will. Look at your neighbor say, I know. Look at the other one and say, it's all good. It's all good when I have to cry. It's all good when I have to fight. It's all good when I'm misunderstood. It's all good when it gets difficult. It's all good because God is growing something in me. And when I come out of this, uh, it's all good. It's all good because sometimes the trouble means I'm on the team. It's all good because God is giving me something that I'm going to need in my next season. But then there's something else in here. And I believe I'm going to lose you for three minutes. And we're going to meet back up at the cross. And then I promise we're out. Because sometimes you got to call it all good. Because God is calling us back home. It's all good because this trial is God calling me back to himself. See if I can make it plain. In that first verse, it says, to the 12 tribes of the dispersion or the diaspora. Now, you and I are used to using the word diaspora as a badge of honor because we will say we're part of the diaspora. 
which means we're a part of the African diaspora. We're a part of the black presence in the world all over the places. And we are the diaspora because we've been scattered. Now, when he writes to the 12 tribes, and some translations call it the scattered, now what we know about God is this scattering language means that at some point they got away from God and God allowed them to get scattered. So diaspora in this context is not necessarily a badge of honor. It is a reminder that at some point they got scattered and we know that God wouldn't let scattering happen except they had done something or had been somewhere that displeased God. And then in the displeasing God, God uses, because we know this theologically, God doesn't let your enemy win except when God is using your enemy as a means of dealing with you in order to call you back. So that when James writes to 12 tribes of the diaspora or the dispersion, he's saying, Ali Ali, oxen free. He's saying, come on back home. When you see this trouble, it's you being called back home. Now here's the part where I'm going, I'm going to be uncomfortable for you. Because we are a traumatized people. And whenever we look backwards, it's kind of hard for us and it's hard for me to see any fault or be, any of my behavior being complicit in what I had to go through. And I want to suggest to you that when we sit around and look at the scattered condition of we as African Americans, and the scattered condition of we not just as African Americans, but even as black people, and how we are scattered abroad, it could be, just raise a theological argument, that if in fact John Mbiti who is the father of African theology, who makes the argument that Christianity is so old on the continent of Africa that it could be considered an indigenous religion. That ain't how your history books tell it. Because when Europeans went to Africa and they saw Christianity but didn't know it as Christianity because it didn't look like their Christianity, then they began another meta-narrative that suggests to you, you were introduced to Christianity on a slave ship, or that, you were, that the first time you heard about Christianity was in 1619 on somebody's plantation. So that the, the, the thought of Christianity as being a white man's religion or something we just got to is more prevalent. But is it more possible that the interior, even back there uh, when Philip talked to the Ethiopian eunuch, and, and that the Ethiopian eunuch of Queen Kandake, not Candace, but Kandake, which means queen mother of mothers. And Ethiopian meant everything under the Iberian Peninsula. So that the gospel went down there first before it ever even got to Rome. That's why the oldest African, uh, oldest Christian church is not in Rome, it's in Africa, it's in Ethiopia. Because this thing was there. So that when the narrative comes, that when we were brought over on ships, no Christians were brought over, but they were just Muslims brought over and all other religions. There could have been some Muslims, but is it possible that somewhere back there we got dispersed? Is it possible that somewhere back there, you see, the Tikar people from Cameroon in recent history are all Muslim, but if you understand them in total world history, the Tikar people were Christian people before that. Is it possible that during the Eastern slave trade and during the Western slave trade, there was something that scattered us when we got away from Jesus? And then is it possible that because we got away from Jesus, the enemy had a season of, of victory in our lives? And so now we're scattered and we're fighting over who we are and some of the trouble that we're experiencing is because God is calling all of us, come on back to Jesus. Now, you all are getting ready to think that I'm going to start a holy war in Philadelphia because 35% of the black community is Islamic and that's 
that's going to cause a holy war in your house. And I need you to know this is deeper than religion. It is deeper than denomination because when you begin to understand Christianity and Islam today, it has been tainted by the Arabs and tainted by the Europeans uh, so that the forms of these religions uh, can, can obscure the argument because I serve notice on you. I am comfortable uh, according to Craig Keener in his book Defending Black Faith. I'm comfortable with embracing the prophet Muhammad as a defender of Jesus but I'm going way back y'all. Uh, he defended Jesus against the unholy Catholic Church which had a trinity not the trinity that we talk about today but a trinity of the Father and Mary and the Son which is not the trinity of the Bible and Muhammad fighting as a defender of Jesus had a form of appreciation for Jesus and love for Jesus that is not understood in the context of the Islam that we see today I want to suggest to you that whether we're talking about Islam or Christianity all of us are having to throw off the trappings of Eurocentrism and Arab thought and if we're really going to get back to the religion it's not about being Baptist it's not about being Lutheran it's not about being Catholic it's about knowing who Jesus is it's not about because there are forms of Christianity that don't look like Christianity that's why get in trouble Waller when they fought when Napoleon fought against when Napoleon fought against the Haitians and got his tail whooped and because he didn't understand what he was dealing with he came up with words like voodoo and Hutu because he didn't understand the form of religion that was being practiced by those people who called on the name of Jesus I'm not talking about whether you wear a kufi or not I'm not talking about whether you go to masjid or not I'm not talking about whether you go to Enon or Mount Airy I want to know have you come back to Jesus I need you to understand Islam does not save Christianity does not save Judaism does not save Jesus saves it's about knowing who he is and is some of the trouble in my life and your life meaning we got to get back out of all of our religious dogma and get back to the truth that he was and is the son of God that he was born in a manger with no place to lay his head I'm just talking about Jesus that he walked the streets of Jerusalem healing the sick and raising the dead I'm talking about Jesus that he prayed in a garden till sweat like drops of blood came from his head I'm talking about Jesus that they tried him in an unjust court but he never said a mumbling word I'm talking about Jesus and then they strung him up on an old rugged cross put nails in his hands and put nails in his feet now before you get nervous if I were talking about anybody else my sermon would be over if I were talking about Confucius I would have to stop at his death if I were talking about Mohammed I would have to talk stop at his death if I were talking about any other figure I would have to stop at his death but I'm talking about Jesus and I'm just getting started because after he died they put him down in the grave he stayed there Friday and stayed there Saturday but then early Sunday morning he got up with all power in his hands and as of today he's alive and doing well I need you to know that I know why I'm a Baptist preacher but I wear my Baptist as a loose garment I am a believer in Jesus Christ I believe he's the son of God I believe his blood cleanses I believe he's a healer I believe he's a heart fixer and a mind regulator I believe that he can do anything but fail and I believe 
that if we gonna get together it's got to be in Jesus if you're gonna heal your family it's got to be in Jesus if we gonna fix the streets of Philadelphia it's got to be in Jesus because in Jesus we have victory in Jesus we have hope my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood, His righteousness. And I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name, on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is sinking sand. Every now and then, when you find yourself trouble run to the rock that is higher than I run to Jesus the author and finisher of our faith in the all right yes yes I'm trying to leave y'all alone but when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all will fall all of our religions are flawed at some point but what matters is who Jesus is and the reason I know because I met him when you know who Jesus is it's not what your mother said it's not what your father said not what your pastor said you met him for yourself And when you know him, you can look at every trouble and say, it's all good. I know he's working this out for me. I don't know how many nights I'm going to cry, but I know on the other side of this, it's all good. I don't know how he's going to work it out, but it's all good. And because of that, count it all joy. Matter of fact, next time you bump into some trouble, you ought to confuse the devil with just start laughing at it as soon as it shows up. Just start giving God praise. 
because I know what's on the other side of this. Listen, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I do know this. Some of you probably know it because you got friends texting you. The, so the server went down. This will have to be put back up later on. Somebody didn't see it this morning. If you're in here, God intended you to hear this word. If you are in here, if you are in here and don't have a church home, I promise you, I believe with all my heart, this is the day you are to give your life to him if you have not already done so. I want to invite you to come. That person who's in the middle of the trouble and recognizes it as an opportunity to come home, I want you to come on home. For that person who is in here that recognizes God is calling you back in. Come on, sis, yes. Oh, oh, how I love you because. Come on, let's say it again. Yeah. Come on, family, come on. you can sit on the 20th row and nobody knows nobody knows that you're really minister so and so nobody knows that you've been involved in ministry and your spirit is aching because you know it's time to really get back involved because it's not enough to be saved but you got to have a place where you're carrying out your covenant if I'm talking to you I want to invite you to come I believe that you're here on assignment and I want to invite you to come on and come on back in. The doors of the church are open. How I love you.
put your hands together for those who have responded to the call. To all those who are standing before me, we are a great church. There's no doubt about that, but we are a much better church because you have decided to join us here. For those who are here for the very first time to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, we want to say a prayer with you. That prayer is the ABCs of our faith. We admit that we are sinners. We believe that Jesus died on the cross and we confess what we believe in our heart. That prayer, I want you to repeat after me. For those who have already said that prayer and are coming back into the life of the church, we're going to say a prayer with you as well. And then afterwards, we're going to go with the person who's standing next to you and we're going to continue to usher you into the life of the church. We're all bowing our heads in the sanctuary. And for those who are here to accept Christ for the very first time, please repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I admit that I was a sinner. But I accept your Lord, your Son, Jesus Christ, as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe he died on the cross for my sins, but rose again with all power in his hands. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, I pray. Father God, in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father God, for the call went out, Father God, and did not return void. We thank you, Father God, for every brother and sister who stands before us right now. We ask, Father God, that you just help us, Father God, to continue to usher them into this place. Father God, we thank you, Father God, for the gifts and talents that they're going to bring to our Father God, that they're going to make us even a better place. Father God, we ask that you bless the deacon, deacon S, CCGs, deacon A, all those who will minister to them, love on them, and care for them. Open up our ears, open up our minds, open up our hearts that we may receive them in such a way, Father God, that their lives, Father God, because they gave them to you, will be forever changed. We love you and we thank you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. We're loving Thanksgiving in our hearts. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Now, Enoch, do me a favor. Make some noise for those who are coming into the life of the church. Make them feel warm. Make them feel appreciated. ready to go but I want you to, I want to ask you to do one last thing with me I need all of my young people all of my young people we're getting ready to get out of here but all of the young people that are still in here you're 18 and under would you join me at this altar join me at this altar we're gonna pray and we're getting out 18 and under come on down come on down 18 and under 18 and under and we're on out we're on our way out 18 and under come on let's bless God for them they're coming 18 and under it's not gonna be long but I need all of you here 18 and under Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, 18 and under, 18 and under. We got some in the balcony, come on, yep, come on, come on, come on. Oh, mm, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love because. all these young people that are coming down here would you help me celebrate all of them amen 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 listen as you're coming I wanted to pray with you as we close this thing out you know we do the pastor's honor roll for 9th to 12th grade we know there are other honor rolls it's just our, our sort of way of um, raising a generation that when you're in the seventh grade you start planning when I get to ninth grade I want to make that on a roll and certainly academics are a very important part it is important um, to be lifelong learners it's important to 
keep your brain, keep reading. The young Abrahams know that um, we read. Black men, we read every day. We say we're gonna put these eyes on these pages at least 30 minutes a day. And I don't care, read, read a comic book, but read something every day for the rest of your life. It carves out grooves in your mind. But please know this, academics by themselves without spiritual grounding is not enough. I'm never worried about a child from Enon leaving here, going to college, and, and flunking out. I'm not, I'm not even worried about that. I'm not worried about, because we've got some gift. I, I enjoyed listening to all of the different things. I, I'm never worried about that. But sometimes I am concerned that, that not that the grades are not going to be all right, but, but life might get you. Because there are other ways to have to leave school other than grades. It's life stuff poor choices and that stuff comes from spiritual grounding you know one of the things that we want we used to talk about we used to talk about this thing called Enon Phenom and we said that one day we're going to look up around this city and we're going to see people who were raised in Enon sitting in different seats um, and we're going to be excited about that and and we're starting to see a little bit of that around the city because I believe so much in you and the whole ministry, the whole time that I've tried to be here is all about the raising of young people, the raising of into adults, not just being stars when you're 18, but being whole, full adults and walk into, because the best part of life is when you get up here. I mean, I, I know you're having fun, but it's really fun to get grown. It really is. It really is. And, and I want to pray with and for you. I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you to dive in and be involved even more. Not just with the turning in of the report cards, but, but with the choir, with the young Abrahams, with the young sisters in Christ, with the young warriors, with the different ways. You know, it's interesting. Sometimes church, for every young generation, there's always a portion of this that's boring. Um, and it's just, that's just kind of real. Um, we work, we work at it and work for you uh, to make it something that is interesting. But what's most important is when you get to a place where you yourself know your faith for yourself. And your faith won't necessarily look like mine or anybody else's. It'll look like your understanding that'll be rooted in Jesus. And we want to help you with that. I want to pray for you as we get ready to go out of here. You are not just our future, but you're the fuel of our today. And you are such important parts of our community. And we love you and bless God for you. And we thank God that you are here today. We're bowing our heads. I'll see some of you this afternoon. Amen. God, I bless you and thank you. I thank you for the reminder that sometimes trouble happens, but it's all good. I thank you for these young people that have encouraged our hearts today to know that our living is not in vain. Lord, I'm praying for the young person under the sound of my voice who's at this altar right now, for whom life is interesting, all of the stuff of teenage years and adolescence and all the stuff that comes that all the questions about faith and religion and all of those things are swirling around in their heads and I thank you God for it and I thank you for adults in this building who are ready to have those conversations and I thank you for a church that makes room God for them help us Lord to love on them in ways that we all will gain and grow help me to never lose touch God that I might grow that I might touch the future, oh God, and you get glory. Then God, we thank you for the response to the gospel. We thank you for this day, oh God. And I pray for the person who's right in the middle of the trouble right now. And I pray that you hold on to them and they hold on to you, that they will be able to say it's all good. Now, God, as we get ready to leave this place, but never from your saving grace, Lord, give us traveling grace until we meet again. 
We ask it in the matchless, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus the Christ. And for his sake we do pray. Let every heart say amen, amen, and amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Say, Jesus, you are joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. Yeah. You're the heart of my For my tomorrow 